I was born 93 years ago at 1410 Pettibone Street on the south end of Flint. My folks lived there for a number of years. My dad was a builder. He built the house and he sold it. And, and over, over time he moved out on Miller Road and uh, I lived out there and we had a you know, nice time. My folks had 10 kids and I was about the middle one of the 10. Went to a little school close by, a couple of blocks or so. Crocker School on the corner of London Road and Bristol Road. And after the eighth grade, I was one of the heroes at that small school because I could play soccer real good. Felt great, but when I went to high school, that was a different story in Swartz Creek where they had lots of kids. And to get to Swartz Creek, I used my thumb, caught a ride on Miller Road. When I was young, you know, maybe I was five, six, seven years old or so, I remember the Depression. And my dad couldn't find enough jobs. He couldn't find enough work, so he had to go on the WPA. At the time, it was work. Um, Pro progress program or something, a federal program. And he ended up pushing a shovel, cleaning the streets with about 20 other guys. So we were poor. We were poor growing up. But there was a lot of love in the family. My oldest brother was Ronald, and my next oldest was uh, Raymond and they were from a different mother than I had, but the same father, as the mother died after uh, the birth of those two. And then came Ruby, and then Emerald, and Pearl, and Dallas, and me, and Bethel, and, uh, and uh, let's see, Burl, Bethel, and, uh, Junior, Ernest Junior. I think that's I think that's the right number. When I hit 18, I knew I was going to be inducted because that that was the the, the law. And I didn't want to go to Canada, see if I could escape it. So I did my thing and went down to Detroit to find out what it was all about, I had a choice. I could go and talk with either any of them. So I went to the Navy, talked with them. They said, yep, you, you're healthy enough. We'll take you. So I was inducted in the Navy. And went to San Francisco and was assigned to a, a destroyer. I was on a destroyer for about six months in the Southwest Pacific. It was a minesweeper. Shortly after six months out in the Pacific, <clears throat> they gave me an opportunity to go to trade school. And so I went to an electrical, uh, electrical interior communications school in Ames, Iowa for six months. And then at uh, uh, West Virginia for six more months and then up to Washington, D.C. for six more months. In the last uh, six months or so, Marion was able to be with me, and we had a living quarters off base and enjoyed it a lot. But, uh, and I got my discharge and come home. And... Can you talk to me a little bit about how you met Grandma? Yes, her church. She went to a Methodist church in the north end of Flint, and our minister had invited their choir out to our church, and they had a choir of about 15 young kids. One of the girls in the choir was pretty attractive, and she had a very nice voice. She, in fact, sang two solos during the program, and so before they left, 
I met her out at the door and said, I want to I wanna meet you. And that uh, was fine. So I said, would you go ice skating with me? And she said, yeah. So we went ice skating. <clears throat> and uh, she didn't know how to ice skate, so I helped her along and kept her off the ice most of the time. And we did that a few times and, uh, and went to hymn sings at the First Nazarene Church. She would, I'd date her and she'd go with me to the hymn sings and that was fine and I met her parents, you know, and she met my parents and long story short, within two years we were married. And after a couple of years she bore Carolyn and, and then uh, actually about every two years we had another one and we had a good life and Kids were all perfect. Let's see, there must have been a few goofy things. <clears throat> the, the toughest one was trying to raise uh, our daughter called Kathy. Oh, here she is, I can't say that. We, we were thrilled with our kids. It was a joy, always been a joy. Being a builder, I had an opportunity to learn something about the carpentry trade. And I, I appreciated that. When I met Marion and we were married, we had an opportunity to move in this apartment upstairs above my folks for a while. And after a bit of time, maybe six months, I bought a piece of property down near the creek, which was on a side road close within about six blocks of my folks' house. So I'd walk down there and after work and work on the house. I actually laid the blocks and dug the footings and all this. And Marion actually helped me as I was working on it. Believe it or not, she ran a scoop while I pulled it with a horse. Uh, my dad was aging, and so I, I, learning the carpentry business, I had a great opportunity. And when he was 70 years old, he retired, and I bought his business. I think I paid like $30,000 or something over time for his interest. So uh, I worked on a Pilgrim Holiness Church on the east side where I knew some people and they hired me to design and build an addition to their church. And from there, it moved on up. I got a Nazarene church where we worship on Die Road, built that, built others. Uh, all in all, within about a 15 year period, I built about uh, close to 300 churches. So that was fun. And after, when I was 50, 50, I think it was, I decided it was time for me to cut loose. Of course, pretty soon, like when we were going to Florida and so on, our kids had grown and we had retired and they, they were on their own, married, a lot of them. So after their marriage and Marion and I were retired. We traveled quite a bit that way too. To and from Florida. We built a house in Florida on the on Lake Sebring. Built a second house not far from there and sold it. And, and uh, we, we just had fun. Always had fun. I, I never had any great disappointments except, you know, when there was the death in the family. Carolyn passed away and she had diabetes since he was a, a teenager. And that was a hard, hard thing. And then when Marion passed away, it was very hard. It was a healing. It, it took years to heal. You know, you, you do heal. 
I lived for her. It was such a good marriage. And she was smarter than I was. She always was an A student, and I was just an average student. She always got top grades, and that impressed me a lot. And so she had a lot of wisdom. And uh, she was my uh, source of strength. The last two years of her life, she became ill. And uh, that was very difficult. It was very difficult. She was actually bedridden for, I think, about two years, wasn't it? I can't see. About one year she was bedridden and even couldn't, didn't recognize us. But uh, just before she passed away, she opened her eyes and says, my Dale. And she was gone. I love it when there's harmony in the family and how to achieve that. Every family has to find their own way. Some people are better at it than others. And I, I think Marion and I did a good job. It seems to me that uh, kindness, but yet rules that are firm, there are certain rules that are important. Anyway, I always wanted the kids to be good guys and ra raise their kids that way. And I'm proud of all of us, all of you. You're a very optimistic person. Yes. Why is that? Uh, well, I think it's mostly my faith, my good health. If I was an ill person, you know, half of the time, I don't know if I'd be that optimistic. But I've always been healthy. And I've appreciated it, and I thank the Lord a lot. My parents were optimists. And you know, we pick a lot from our parents, and, and I, always, I always said, Lord, I'm blessed. Help me to have self-confidence. I don't want to be arrogant. I want to be humble, but I want to have self-confidence. And uh, my family has helped me to be self-confident, you know. I think they'd kick me in the pants if I weren't, if I come around grumpy. But I don't want to, I wake up in the morning and I say, thank you, Lord. What do you feel like you've been able to pass along down the road to the whole gang? I hope my optimism, a little humility, and self-confidence and faith. I, I'd like to, I'd like to live my faith so they can see that I'm just genuine. And when I go to, when they shut the lid down, I want to say bye, guys, with a smile. <laughs>